Just a reminder for our viewers, we are waiting for that uh, handover ceremony, of course. A uh, top civil servant named by President Emmanuel Macron today to replace his Prime Minister, Edouard Philippe. Uh, France 24's and Nadia Massi is standing by for us. Let's cross live uh, in Par to her in Paris. Uh, Nadia, a relative unknown then, uh, Jean Castex, uh, until today, of course. Yeah, that's right. I think only if you were a particularly avid follower of French politics would you have had a sense who Jean Castex was until he uh, was thrust into the spotlight today with that announcement that he's become, uh, he will become very shortly France's new uh, prime minister. He uh, is the mayor of a small town uh, in the south of France uh, and he's been uh, the person in this government who's been really uh, charged with uh, helping ease France uh, out of this lockdown period. Uh, and it seemed to be something that he's done quite well at doing. Uh, internationally, at least, France has been quite praised for its kind of slow uh, deconfinement um, process. Um, but he is really... Um, a rel he's not a sort of a showy politician. He's somebody who seems to be really a, a technocrat, a bureaucrat, uh, somebody perhaps a little different to uh, Edouard Philippe, who also entered this office as a relative political unknown, but has become pretty popular in the past uh, couple of years while holding that office. He's, he seemed to be somebody who spoke to the French uh, very directly and with honesty during the COVID-19 crisis in those uh, weekly briefings. And we'll have to see uh, whether or not... Um, uh, Jean Castex follows in that similar pattern, is somebody who becomes quite popular uh, in the line of Edouard Philippe, or if he's somebody who stays more in the shadows with uh, Emmanuel Macron uh, stepping a bit further uh, towards the centre. Well, Nadia, as you speak, we are just watching uh, very eagerly, waiting uh, for uh, Edouard Philippe and, of course, his new replacement, Jean Castex, to, uh, to come down the stairs, uh, essentially, and, and begin uh, speaking uh, during this handover ceremony. You know, I'd like to come back, though, we've been speaking about it a great deal, about this need for Emmanuel Macron to reinvent, reboost his government. I mean, there was essentially no getting around it, was there? No, that's absolutely right. This has been a top couple of years for Emmanuel Macron in terms of his popularity ratings, but really a particularly difficult couple of months. We had first, uh, as we heard a little bit earlier on, those uh, strikes over transport in France. We had the Gilets Jaunes movement. We had those pension strikes. And then, of course, we had COVID-19 and all of Emmanuel Macron's uh, plans for major reforms in France have had to be put on hold because we are likely looking now at a very uh, long, difficult recession uh, in France. And we've just had, of course, the local elections as well, local elections where Emmanuel Macron's La République en Marche party has failed uh, to uh, do particularly well. We saw traditional centre-left and centre-right parties as well as Green parties doing pretty well. His uh, new party really struggling there. So this was a moment for Emmanuel Macron to try and kind of shake up politics, to try and reposition himself after a very difficult couple of months, say he's going to do things differently, and he's hoping that the presence of Jean Castaire, this kind of traditional technocratic figure from the, from the right, will be somebody who can help him, help him do that. I mean, there will be those, Nadia, who say, well, look, another uh, candidate or, you know, replacement, if you will, from the right uh, political uh, spectrum. Why not somebody from the Greens? That question's been asked quite a bit Well, that's today. a great question. I think that's... That's absolutely right. And I think it has seemed perhaps a little counterintuitive uh, that Emmanuel Macron, having seen uh, in that local election that the Green parties had done very well, that some of the left-wing parties had done very well, that he has appointed a figure uh, from the centre-right of French politics. Excuse me, I've got a van coming very close behind me. I think we're all right there. Uh, it, he's appointed a figure from the centre-right. Now, that might seem on the surface uh, a little counterintuitive, um, but I think he's done it because this is really a way for Emmanuel Macron to consolidate his power. He will say now to the French people, I've heard your calls to have more left-wing policies, to have more environmental policies, and it will be me, the president, the man who implements those policies for you, not uh, the prime minister. Because as we have been hearing, Edouard Philippe, the, 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 the man who is for the next few minutes still France's prime minister, is somebody who was a very popular figure in France. He uh, is somebody who was seen to be a little bit of a rival to Emmanuel Macron. Macron is hoping that if he can put him out of the way. It is him who can be, at, who can take the credit for some of these changes going forward, particularly environmental changes. But it's certainly a gamble for the president because, of course, when that 2022 re-election bid comes around, Edouard Philippe, a popular uh, politician, could rise up and challenge him for the presidency. So he's trying to sideline his current prime minister. Will it work? Time will tell.
Only time will tell. Uh, Nadia, we're of course still waiting for that handover uh, ceremony. We will be checking in with you uh, after that. In the meantime, do stay safe, firmly on the pavement. Um, other world news now as we wait uh, once again for that handover.